So what is polycythemia? So if we were to actually look at the word polycythemia, emia refers to a blood condition, and then poly refers to many, and cyte refers to cells. So it's a blood condition with many cells, but that doesn't tell us exactly what it is. In fact, it is actually a condition also known as erythrocytosis. And if we were to actually do the same thing and break down that word erythrocytosis, the suffix osis refers to abnormal condition, and the prefix erythrocyte means an erythrocyte, which is a red blood cell. So polycythemia or erythrocytosis is a condition involving abnormally high levels of red blood cells or erythrocytes. So that's going to be the definition of polycythemia or erythrocytosis, but we need more information in order to tell whether or not a patient actually has this condition. And how do we do that? So we want to do a complete blood count or CBC. And in doing that, we can get measures like hemoglobin levels and hematocrit. So red blood cells are like bags of hemoglobin. So when we get a measure of hemoglobin, we're going to get a measure of how many red blood cells there are in the blood. So that's one way to tell if a patient has polycythemia or erythrocytosis. And the other way is hematocrit. And hematocrit is actually a percentage of the blood that's made up of red blood cells. So those are the two measures we can use. And the measures and the definitions for polycythemia and erythrocytosis are going to be different depending on whether the patient is a biological male or a biological female because of the influence of testosterone. So testosterone will increase levels of red blood cells. So males generally will have an average higher than females. So this is the reason why we use different criteria for determining the diagnosis. So in males, if the hemoglobin is greater than 165 grams per liter and or if hematocrit is greater than 49%, that's enough to say a biological male has polycythemia. And in females, if a biological female has a hemoglobin greater than 160 grams per liter and or if they have a hematocrit greater than 48%, that's also enough to say that that biological female has polycythemia. Now, erythrocytes, again, contain hemoglobin, and hemoglobin is important because it allows red blood cells to carry oxygen to tissues. So red blood cells will be pumped through the body. Once they get to the lungs, in lung capillaries, they will take up oxygen from the lungs. And then those red blood cells will be pumped into other parts of the body and will carry the oxygen on hemoglobin molecules to different tissues. And they will let go of that oxygen to those tissues. And those tissues will utilize that oxygen. And ultimately, erythrocytes or red blood cells are produced in the bone marrow. So they can be produced by the red bone marrow and they are influenced by a hormone known as erythropoietin, which is itself produced from the kidneys. Now, polycythemia can have multiple different underlying causes. So when we see the blood work, we see high levels of hemoglobin or hematocrit. So we say that the patient has polycythemia or erythrocytosis, but they may have an underlying condition that is causing that high level of red blood cells. So each of those underlying conditions will have its own risk factors, its own age of onset, and its own prevalence. So for instance, in what we would call primary polycythemia or polycythemia vera, which is due to a genetic mutation, we can have increases in red blood cell production. And the median age for onset of this condition is 60. And in this case, biological males would outnumber biological females two to one with this condition. But there are other causes of polycythemia, including being in a high altitude environment, having a lung condition like COPD or asthma, and some other kidney conditions.